What's up everyone? Since the business school interview season's about to start, I thought I'd make a video on advice I wish I had known before I'd done my interviews last year. I also share my day-to-day -day business school experience on my Instagram story, so go check that out if you're interested in seeing what life at a top MBA program is actually like. For all you interviewees out there, I've got good news. The hardest part of the business school interview is getting the interview. Something I was told last year and that I believe myself after going through it all is that the interview process isn't going to put you over the edge. Really what it is, is it's a mechanism to weed out people who aren't the right cultural fit for the school or who are just weird or whatever. It's not something that's really gonna put you over the edge and get you in. It's really more pass fail than anything. So as long as you pass, then you go into kind of this pool of potential acceptees where it just becomes more of a numbers game in terms of getting the right class mix and, and all that. So it's somewhat important, but not something to just really stress out about. Obviously there are several different types of interviews for MBA programs, but to keep it simple, I'm gonna break it up into two. One being solo interviews and two being group interviews. Solo interviews, like the ones used at Stanford, Harvard, MIT, Northwestern, and, and a bunch of schools are where, of course, you are the only person being interviewed. Sometimes there's two people interviewing you, three people, one person, whatever. For these, they can be different and have different flavors, but there's a few key themes that I think are key to keep in mind. One, keep your intro and answers brief. Spoiler alert, interviewers are people. They interview dozens of candidates every year. They probably hear the same kind of stories over and over. So it can get a little boring for them. To avoid them spacing out and you losing their attention, try to keep your answers between two and three minutes. That's long enough where you can give a good answer to the question, but not too long where they're starting to think about you know, what they're gonna eat for lunch or where they stop listening to you. Number two, use the STAR method when responding to questions. Now, there's a lot out there about this. If you don't know, STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. If you don't know what this is, I'm not sure how you got that this far in the business school process, but just Google it. It's important. Three, have a few, maybe you know, three to six pre-rehearsed stories so that you can answer whatever question they throw at you. They hit you with the leadership question. Talk about that time when you led a team and got excellent results ahead of time, under cost, all that kind of stuff. They hit you with an adversity question. Talk about the time you had to struggle through something or go through tough times to get the mission done. Four, make your stories come to life. This goes back to keeping the interviewer engaged. Really, what this kind of translates to is use real names when you're telling a story and tell about how they reacted. Just doing simple things like that will help make the story come to life, not only for the interviewer, but also for you. So it'll make it easier for you to tell the story in a succinct manner that, that's interesting and engaging. Five, and this one should be obvious, is make sure you know the school. You should be good on this front since you needed all this kind of information for your essays and everything, but since interviews are you know, a month or two after all that is submitted, make sure you brush up on it just so that you can answer questions well in terms of how you're going to get involved at the school or how you want to go get to a certain place and you're going to use the resources or clubs or programs or majors or whatever at the school to get from A to B. Number six, follow up with your interviewer. Admittedly, I didn't do this and it worked out fine, but it's a good idea to just follow up with your interviewer, maybe send them a quick email or something a day or two after your interview and just come off as courteous. Okay, now for group interviews, all the things I just said are still mostly true, but there's a few other nuances I just wanna throw at you. First, be a team player. Group interviews by design are about seeing you work in teams, not seeing about how you are as an individual. They already know you're successful and driven and all that. That's why you got an interview invitation. Now they wanna see if you're good in groups. So don't interrupt, don't be overpowering conversations, just, be a team player, get involved, add some quality points, but do things to keep the team moving forward. Two, be likable. Use people's first names. Look around the group when you're talking. Have body language that says you're interested and engaged. All of these things will help you stand out as someone that people want to work with and that is a good team player and people want to have in a group with them. Number three, Build on other people's points. Most group interviews revolve around the team having to come up with some kind of decision, usually in, in a time crunch situation. So that being said, 
don't just put out statements there that don't say anything or mean anything or, or you're just copying what someone else said. That's not helpful and it's just a waste of time. Nobody likes that. Take what other people say and move the ball forward. So be like, that's a great point, Karen. Uh, I also think we should consider doing X, Y, and Z. Number four, and this is this can be a really good one for group interviews, is help people who are struggling to get in the conversation get involved. If you're already making solid points and you know making good contributions to the group, this can really help you stand out because it shows that not only are you you know a, a good individual contributor and you can work with the team and help guide the team towards a solution, but it also means that you're looking out for everybody. You could just say something as simple as, you know, that's a great point, but I think Matt was saying something similar that could be a good solution to this. Uh, Matt, what, what were you saying earlier? Just something like that can really, really, one, help you stand out, and that is the kind of thing good leaders do. I know the business school application process can be stressful, so I'm trying to help with all this. And if you have questions, just leave it in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I, I try to get back to those ASAP. Also, of course, feel free to leave a comment or DM me about any comments you have, any ideas for videos you have, all that kind of stuff. Really, the more engagement I see, the more I see this is helping, the more motivated I am to make more content and, and try to help out more. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. So until next time, keep going.